7 10 p.m. on Wednesday, March 9th, 2011. Before I, uh, the first time would be approve the minutes of the meeting. Uh, be before that, uh, I just want to reiterate to everyone about the old me open meeting law, uh, chapter 30 of the Mass General Law, section 20. Uh, if anyone is not asked by the chair, or if anyone speaks out and the chair asks them to be silent and they're not silent, uh, then the chair can have them removed from the meeting. First item. Approve the minutes of the meetings. Okay, I have various min uh, minutes. I have one here on September 8th. Uh, like members like to read it. September 8th, uh, what's the... Uh, make motion we approve. My only question is, um, since you are absent, should you be signed in and approving those? No, I'm not going to. Okay. I'm just going to call the vote on favor. Aye. So, because uh, I was not here, it's just... Uh, it's that was Zoom. a speed meet. In the yeah. The next uh, one is... December 1st. Um, the only question I have here is it says the fender fell off the boat and the cost is for 400 to replace it, but that's repair and replace because there was some gel coat damage, so it needed to okay. be, it's not just the $400 Actually, it's fender. aluminum. It was the aluminum, I guess, I had to repair the paint. Okay. So we should just make a note? You want to yeah, make a note. Make a note. And uh, you can just change that, but we already, well, uh, so you just is there a second? Repair and replace? Yes. Yeah, so just second. repair and replace. replace. So is there a second? Yeah, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, 
and that was actually the seventh first meeting. This is <coughs> January twelfth. Accept the minutes of January 12th. Accept. Second. All in favor, aye. aye. January 26th. <coughs> A motion for to accept the minutes of January 26. I second all in favor. Aye. Aye. This is uh, February 9th. I second the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, while we're on minutes, um, I want to address a, uh, a request uh, for minutes. Actually, this is a request from the chief. Uh, for minutes of meetings. Let me see. Looks like May of 2010. Do you have that information on the request of the minutes? In terms of the request? What was sent to you, yeah, with the request. Was it May of 2010 through when that was sent? It's the Bureau, and I, I don't know. And, and the, uh, I know, I believe it was more records that went back to 2008. Yeah, we have uh, here May through August of 2008, but also May of 2010. Already. Well, that's my question. Do any, did any of my board members uh, give the chief any minutes? Yes. And what did you give him? For I that? gave him uh, 
everything that I had copies of since my first meeting on the board. And that's been since? Um, May, April of 2009 forward. Okay. All right. So now, at that time, we didn't have all the minutes that were approved, which would be September 10, November 10. September, November, oh, the ones we just approved, actually. Correct. Okay. I had no records of them at that time. All right. And do you have records of November 10th? November 2010. That wasn't part of the request that I had. That wasn't any part of the plan. Well, we have November 2010. I don't know if we approved that or not. Um, I want to say we did, but I can double check. Do um, you have them? I have them here. Do you have them on December? Well, December's we just... Let me see December for a second. Okay. Is it saving? Yes. Okay. Okay, so I have November here, so in case we didn't, we should approve. This I'll need no a copy of those myself. Okay, November 10th. Anything that was approved today plus November 10th. All right. 10th. Do you have October's, Ken? <coughs> yes, I have yeah. October 13th. So, yeah. so here's November 10th, and my number three this.
Why? Why? Do you have the email that was sent to you? Did you can't get the email that was sent. Okay. Only question on these minutes are uh, the $1,900 for the radio box. That was for the school department, correct? Should make note of it that it was for the school department. Yeah, make note of it that it was for the school department. Okay. I make a motion to accept the minutes. I second it. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, now getting back to the uh, chief requested minutes of meetings from, I'm pretty sure it was May of 2010 through the end of 2010. I'd have to look uh, that far. Um, and with we, the exception of September, which we approved in mm -hmm. November, mm -hmm. I delivered those to him. Okay, so we can get copies today to give to him of September now that we approved them. That is okay. correct. Okay. September and November. Right. He also requested... Uh, and that was prior to December. So. Um, I also have this letter that he sent to us on January 18th of 2011. He requested from May through August of 2008. Um, I yeah, have here... I believe we... Suggested he direct it to you because right. none of us were with the, right. on the board at the time. And I just came on in May of 2008, and I was not taking any records, or I was not the chairman. But I do have here um, June and July of 2008. So wow. we can make copies and give him June and July because he requested through August, and the two other members here, and the other ones keep keep the records. So. So we can make copies. I don't know who would give them to him when. Or uh, you want to give copies to the chief? Yeah, why don't yeah. you give me everything? I'll make okay. copies of uh, All right. everything. Okay. And I'll get them to him. Yes? Uh, actually, the first request to your board was made in December 2009 for May 1st, 08 to May 1st, 09. That was the original one that was sent to your board back in December 2009. But the first request for the open minutes was from May 1st, 2008 to May 1st, 2009. And the reason the request was made to you, Mr. Chair, was because in the 2008 annual report, it states that you were the clerk in 2008. That's why they were addressed to you. <coughs> well, I don't, have, I don't have any record of any letter that was sent to me. You check your minutes to December 2009. It was addressed to your board. December. Was there a letter? I, I should have a copy. Well, we'll um, forward you the copy. Well, we'll if not, I will give you another request tomorrow, mm -hmm. sir, for the minutes of May 1st, 2008, to May 1st, 2009. Well, I have a letter here from you dated. I have sent probably a dozen letters to your board, Mr. Chair. With all due respect, they've gone to you and to the well, keeper of the records. Um, the only note in the minutes that I have from December 2009 is Edward Cabral presented committee a letter requesting copies of minutes from July 09 through December 09. It was the same. It was the same night, sir. That's all. We don't have you in the, the minutes. Night. That's the reason why we asked for also not only the minutes but the tapes. To verify that what, what, what it's accurate on the paper. Well, you're stating that you're the one who requested it I, in the minutes. No, it's no, no, sir. Ed. With all due respect, Mr. Chair, I sent a letter to your board mm -hmm. December 2009 mm -hmm. specifically requesting that span of 2008. In my letter to the AG's office, it clearly states the reasons why I'm looking for those minutes. And again, the reason mm -hmm. everything was addressed to you it's because in the district's annual report in 2008, it states that you were the clerk of the Prudential well, that's, for 2008. Chief, that's fine. We can get you the minutes. We're giving you the minutes. We have no problem giving I you the minutes. Looking, but I, have, I mean, this 2008 letter. 2008 is more important than the minutes that I'm looking for. Well, you will get to whatever we have for 2008. Well, you, you will get. 
It's not a problem. It's just that there's so many inconsistencies with with your letter here, and what you're stating, and what's in the minutes. That we sent multiple letters, and my last letter actually stated that we tried numerous times <coughs> to get different dates and different months. Well, which before. ones do you have, and which ones do you need? What I have was the unofficial copies mm -hmm. that Mr. Mello mm -hmm. gave me, because some of them have little notes in it. Okay. Honestly, I don't know what those dates are. I have, I have them with me. What I, I, I am looking mm -hmm. for, and I can put it in writing again, from May 1st, 2008, mm -hmm. to my last request that I believe was, the last one was for January 2012. So now, because I have different, I do have one or two letters from you, but it's different dates. It, it was multiple so, letters. It was multiple letters. So we'll give you, so do you have 2009 minutes? Do you have all 2009? If that, if Mr. Mello. Well, I'm asking you. I mean, you should know what you have. Do you have 2009? He gave me Mind an unofficial copy. Mind I have a little post note in there that Eight. says that a little sticky, not a sticky note, a little well, scratch pad. If that's what you want to consider your board's minutes, then I'll accept that as your board's well, minutes. I'm looking at minutes right here. So do we have, I mean, we have the minutes right here. Kevin has the minutes. He's been keeping all the minutes. So we, what do you have from Kevin? From what I period? have my first official meeting, which was May 6, 2009. I also have a copy. I don't know if I provided the chief with them. I also have a copy of Mr. Metcalf's last <coughs> meeting, which was March 2009 through the present with the exception of September Thanks. in November of 2010. So, but what's your question is prior to. So, over here though, the letter I have that you sent to the AGs is just saying <coughs> from uh, just through August of 2008. So, if you do, so are you saying that now you want from... No, I'm saying I am asking for what I asked for in December. Mm -hmm. And Would, if you don't have my letter dated in December, I will give you a copy of my letter dated in December. And if all you have, Mr. Chair, is two letters received from me, then you are short a lot of letters. No. I know the complaint with the AG's office is through the August 2008. If you want September through the end of 2008, I have them. We'll give you copies. No big deal. Okay. So you do have August 2008. No, I don't have August in 2008. I'm going to give you what I have. I'll give you the minutes of, of all the meetings I have. I was the only one person on the board of three. Uh, my other two members really pretty much control those meetings, as you know. So they're the ones, if I don't have any minutes, uh, the, actually the minutes we have is because I'm the one who suggested that we have someone come, take the minutes of the meeting, which is Linda, and since she's been taking the minutes, you know, that's what we have. We gave her the tapes that my other board members had, and she has gone through uh, quite a few of the uh, meetings, transcripted them, and that's what we have. So if we're missing one meeting, we're you missing a meeting. Week. Well, I don't think so. Do you have executive session meetings in those? Because yeah. there was a lot of executive yeah. session meetings that the Prudential Committee had because my, I was leaving Boston, my well, father's side. Mm -hmm. you, that was when you were having meetings with, I believe it was Chief Dumont and other committee members in regards to how you were going to advertise for a chief. Well, whatever we have, we'll, we will give to you. You know, that's because I can say what we have. And I think we have most of the meetings. From what I saw, um, let me go look back here. Let me see. We have. Now, March, you said you had March of 09? I have it on the official copy, yes. Okay. Because, uh, March. I, I have here. On the board. I have March of 09. I have January 14th of 09. We have two meetings in March because. I think they might have not had one in February. Um, I have December of 08, this 2 of December of 08, uh, November of 08, October of 08, another one October of 08, 
September of 08, another September of 08. So it looks like I have basically all the meetings and you have copies of them. And there were two in September, I think the one in August, um, I can't recall that far back, but sometimes, actually I have evidence to show that what the, what the chairman did back then was he would go to the town clerk and put, and schedule quite a few meetings in a row. And if he had them, he had them, basically. So it seems like I have most of the minutes for you, of the meetings. I would just like to add, uh, yeah. under the open meeting law, any executive session minutes, there has to be a review before they can be released. Um, that review has to determine whether or not the purpose of the executive session is still outstanding. And if it is, then they can't be released. Your name for the record? Brian Cruz, uh, Assistant Town Council uh, for Dartmouth. And, uh, we're what firm are you with? We are with uh, NPC South Sound Attorney Law. Okay. And uh, as I said, uh, you do have to hold a review. Uh, you can either be yourself or you can have an agent or designee do that. Uh, but before an executive session is released, the, uh, they have to be reviewed to see if the purpose for which the executive session is held is still relevant. And if it is, uh, then those records cannot be released. Okay. So we will review the executive session uh, minutes that we have. In the meantime, all the uh, other meetings, I'll um, have someone here, either Kevin or Linda, make copies, and you can have them. Do you have any idea, Mr. Chair, by May? How long is going to take? Probably two. You can have them by tomorrow. The oh, the exact, no, I have, I can't. I, by, by statute, we have 30 days. All right, we have 30 days. So by next month's meeting? Yeah. Thank you. Okay, next. Mr. Chairman, if I may, before we go for just for the record, John Foster will not be here tonight because he had a finance committee meeting in Laham, but he gave me the checks and the vouchers to be signed tonight. Great. And okay. he also, he said you had the budget numbers, so we can review those for the annual report. Okay, great. Okay. <clears throat> Actually, for the record, Chief, the uh, request that you had was from May 10th of two, uh, May 10th through 1 12 11. So we'll give them right through uh, January 12th 11. What year are you talking about? May 11. 10th? Yeah, May, May of 2010 yeah. through January 12th 2011. And anything prior, I'm going to just make sure you copy and you can just give it to them. Get a warrant. Put a warrant. First one's payroll. I make a motion we accept warrant P-9. In the amount of twenty six thousand ninety five dollars and thirty seven cents. <clears throat> Second it. All in favor, aye. Aye. Where's the one that was signed? Right. Yeah. Okay. You can have it. Yeah. Let's put it. Right there. <coughs> you don't want to keep them. Take a coffee, please. Okay, next one is warrant V-9. And not to get alarmed, but our deposit is on it, and that's why it's so large. The PSC manufacturer. Make a motion we accept warrant B-9 in the amount of $246.54. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.
Okay, next item on the list is uh, repairs to building, Chief. And um, first of all, his, we received a letter from the uh, Board of Health. Oh, sure. I'll let my uh, colleagues read this one. Okay, Chief, are you aware of the uh, the letter from the town of Dartmouth uh, dated February 18th, yes. Board of Health? Do you have a copy of that? Okay. Uh, basically, this is the Board of Health. This, um, and I'm going to read some of this into the into the record. This will all, all be part of the minutes of, the, of this meeting. Uh, this is from Wendy Henderson. Uh, she stated that she visited the site on February 14th in response to an inquiry the same morning. <clears throat> from Chief John Alcadino, noting that he had received several complaints from his men regarding mold and air quality in the station that was bothering them. Chief Alcadino said that one of the firefighters was coming with a doctor's note. Uh, Chief Alcadino showed me around the station. Uh, basically... Uh, Speak up. Please. Okay. Mm. 
She actually states in this letter that the area is clean and no visible signs of mold and mildew. The dehumidifier connected to a floor drain was not turned on, but there was noticeable stagnant air and a definite sense of mold and mildew. A wood paneling had been removed from the east wall, Chief Alcadino said, because it had been water damaged and had mold all over it. Uh, he also noted the dehumidifier was not operating because Chief reported it worked so hard it was overheating. Uh, I turned it on temporary to see uh, it was set at 30%. I explained I thought humidity level could be higher than 30% without harm. Um, I did not perceive this heated below ground level room to be humid at the time of my inspection. The unfinished room south of the exercise area had no evidence of mildew or mold or on stored items. The closet in the exercise room where box decorations and miscellaneous items in cardboard boxes were stored was also not found to harbor any visible mold. Uh, Chief Alcatino then took me into the uh, garage area to show where the uh, insulated ceiling had stained. Uh, he attributed the leak in the roof in the section of the building. <coughs> he reported that when it rains, uh, you have to put buckets out to catch the water coming through the insulated ceiling. I explained I would contact the Mass DPH to request a thorough investigation of the facility. Um, and I noted I would remove the rug from the exercise area and run the dehumidifier at a reasonable level as an immediate interim measure as long as it would function safely. And then she contacted the DPH. On February 28th, OHI came down, and their OHI stands for Occupational Health and Safety Environmental Consultants. And there's a full report here. And I'm not going to read the full report, but basically, let me come to the conclusion here. Conclusion, that's... Uh, item six and recommendation. Based on the results of this assessment, it is OHI's professional opinion that the carpet in the basement should be discarded, that the dehumidifier should be operated to maintain the relative humidity levels below 50%, and that the dehumidifier condensed bucket be continuously drained. And um, they also uh, state that the mold spore concentrations in the basement were slightly elevated, but are, no, are not typically rel related to poor health. The most likely source is the area rug. They also stated that the source of the uh, bio uh, spores in the void above the command center is likely the outdoor air. Uh, here they have, they, what they did was they did they took samples of the, the wall downstairs, they took air quality samples downstairs, and they went into the uh, dispatch area above, and they took air quality samples, and they sent it out. Uh, they sent everything out uh, to a lab to be tested. So we don't have any mold in the building, according to OHI. But they said that the problem, you know, if there's any smell, it's to do with the area rug. But the Wendy told you that, on the 14th to remove the rug, so if why I didn't you? Because one, Wendy made the recommendation to remove the rug mm -hmm. and get the dehumidifier. I contacted Gary Lavalette to come down and check the dehumidifier. The dehumidifier per Gary Lavalette who installed it <coughs> is in fact broken. He was scheduled to get a new one. Mrs. Henderson asked me if I was going to uproot the rug and I told her I would not uproot the rug until the Prudential Committee gave the authorization. But the main thing, Mr. Chair, if I may, we wouldn't be having this discussion if, in fact, in 2009, when the insurance, when the claim was made to fix the basement and the room and all the furniture, when the department received the checks, if the basement was actually fixed in 2009 when the insurance claim was paid for the basement. Chief, we, we, we have, have no mold issue. We have no mold issue. They, she asked you to remove the rug, 
And OHI says, remove the rug. We have no mold issue. I just have one other question. OHI and then my, denied, my with all due respect, Mr. No. Chair. The Board of Health did. Wendy told, said, no, she, she suggested. She Wendy recommended. Yeah, recommended remove the rug. Another question, um, I came down here with OHI, Correct. and there was a sign on the door, Correct. and a sign said, per, per the Board of Health, yep. no entrance into the basement at all. What that was, sir, it was... It's not an order for the Board of Health. It, board of health. You're 100% correct. It, it so why did you put that? Mrs. Henderson recommended, just like legal counsel, last I knew, with all due respect, Attorney Murray was the district's legal counsel. I must have missed the meeting that the Prudential Committee voted to hire the town council. But for Attorney Murray, Attorney Murray said, post it on the door. Anyone who feels ill, send them out to be immediately tested. Anyone who comes back positive, have them fill out the insurance papers and try to limit downstairs. When Ms. Henderson was here, Ms. Henderson's recommendation was that nobody should work out down in the basement until the basement is tested. Okay? I took that as her recommendation not to use the basement. The basement was off limits. No, that it's, she clearly she clearly states in her letter, and I spoke with Wendy, that she had no visible signs of mold at all. And basically it was probably just the carpet, just to remove the carpet. And that's what she she says it in the letter. She told it to me. She even said she even uh, when the individual was down here from OHI, she said it to him. I was here, and we clearly saw Port of Board of Health. You, you don't put up a sign that says port, uh, an order per the Board of Health when, in fact, they didn't order it. And Wendy, I called up Wendy. I, you know, I took a picture of it, and I showed her. She wanted me to bring a picture up. I showed her it, and she immediately called you and said, what are you doing? You cannot, I, you cannot post a notice per the Board of Health when, in fact, the Board of Health did not say not to I, use the basement. And I clearly okay? explained to her, I took her recommendations for nobody to go down to the basement as shutting down the basement. Okay? I did not know you. You never contacted me to tell me on the 28th you were bringing a company down here. Okay? What? Because I would have been more than glad to have them open and do everything. She, yep. she made the recommendation to remove the rug. And if you talk to her and you can bring her at next month's meeting, she, when she, I, I called her the day Mr. Lavalette left and explained to her what Mr. Lavalette's findings were. And she asked me if I was going to uproot the carpet, and I told her I would not uproot the carpet until it was definite and until the Prudential Committee gave the authorization to uproot the carpet. Chief, if you, you're the one that said you had this big mold issue, I'm major mold issue in the department, why would you not take the rug up? You don't need us for that if you have a, a mold issue. Or you could have called up the other members and you didn't. With all due respect, Mr. Chairman, I'm not the mm. one that said we had a major issue. I received phone calls from, if you read my letter, mm. I received phone calls in regards to the Mulder's issue from Kurt Brown from the Standard Times because at least seven guys, according to Mr. Brown when he was in the station, received that. When I talked to Mrs. Henderson on the 14th, she said she received See, that's kind of interesting because they're telling me you called. Who called? <laughs> they're telling Kurt me you're Brown. the one who called. Then ask, Mr. You're the, you're then ask Kurt Brown yeah. to be here I mean, at the next meeting, Mr. Yeah. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, well, let's put it this way, Jay. Ask Kurt Brown to be here at the next meeting. And I did call Wendy Henderson, and I also called legal counsel because when Mr. Kurt Brown was here, he said he was going to call them. So I notified both of them in the best interest. I did what yeah. I felt was in the best interest of the well, members, especially since I had a doctor's note from one of our members saying that he was being tested. I shut the basement down. Being tested and being and, and showing positive are two different things, Chief. Okay. I shut the basement down because we right. had a member who went to the doctor. Okay, I have a question. Did you get the results from that member? I have not received it yet. You haven't but received you're the results. Telling me that the basement is clean. No, but guys now I want to. I sent a letter to you, asking. No, I'm concerned. Okay, I sent a letter to you asking uh, before I get the report from OHI. Yeah. I sent a letter asking. I wanted to know, as a, as a board, one member of the board, and right. I think the board should know, if um, the com the individuals that complained to you. Correct. Right. And also the individual had a doctor's note because obviously we have to report that if there is any, uh, if anyone is sick, we have to notify the insurance company. You Correct. still have not gotten those names to us. Because if you read my letter, sir, with all yeah. due respect, it was sent to who I thought was the Thomas legal counsel, Mr. Mm -hmm. Murray, before I can release and violate anybody's civil rights, personal mm -hmm. rights, or any other rights to hold in that information mm -hmm. in a public meeting. Mm -hmm. I wanted what I thought was the Thomas legal counsel. I sent you that letter, sir. Well... I have, I have a letter stating uh, from 
uh, legal counsel, Mike Murray. Uh, I have, um, gentlemen, I have received, uh, reviewed the request of Mr. Santos and the Prudential Committee to review the names of the firefighters who made complaints about the condition of the station. So, uh, under applicable public record laws and statutory and bylaw provisions regarding the duties of the District Prudential Committee, it appears that the committee is entitled to the names of the firefighters making complaint. This is especially so in regards to the committee's duties relative to the real estate of the district and any insurance thereon. Um, he goes, uh, continues to say, however, uh, under uh, privacy and medical statutes, the re release of any medical information or physician's notes should not be dis distributed. Can I ask you what day you received that? Today? I received this today. Yeah. Well, I have not received it. If I would have received that today, I would have produced you the mm -hmm. names tonight. Well, you can do that tomorrow for us. That's easy. Okay. So, how many firefighters made a complaint? It was a total. One went to the doctor, two felt a little not too good when they worked out. There was a total of three that didn't feel too good, and one actually went to the doctor. How many? Three didn't feel good when they were working out. One actually okay. went to the doctor. We got one doctor's note. Mm -hmm. from one individual who went to get tested. I just have one question and just, did you, um, did you mention to those firefighters that we had a mold issue and they need to go get checked out? What was told to every member of this department for a legal counsel was any member that felt they had an issue mm -hmm. was to go immediately get tested and anyone who proved positive tested was to immediately, because they had fought 30 days, to fill out insurance. Mm -hmm. Now my question is, did you tell them before they went and get tested that there's a mold issue in the no, station? Not, you didn't? No, we did. Okay. You, you okay. have something else, wise? Next. Mr. Uh, Chair, with all due respect, are you, you making an question? accusation? No, I'm just I'm asking questions. Um, okay, yeah. excuse me. If I may, since we're still on the mold issue, at what point in time are we going to take the insurance money and fix the basement? Since there was an insurance claim made February 23rd, 2009. And well, checks were put we're gonna, into the district. Well, we're going to ask you that after. Well, that's not me, sir. The checks went to the department. Yeah. We're going to we'll come back to that with you. Sure. At uh, this time, I want to make a motion that we hire Joe Medeiros, who has done contracting work for us, a licensed contractor, to come in and remove the rug from the basement and dispose of it. Um, and I also would like to have a motion to make sure the dehumidifier is properly fixed. How about the, uh, the furniture? Does that need to be removed also? I would say, I would say, can you second that? I would second For that. discussion, I think the furniture, which is all cloth, should be removed also. There's no mention of the furniture. Um, well, when I was down there with OHI, they said the furniture, because it's all the cloth, fine. you know, if, if that, you know. Fine. He basically also said that mold does not grow on cement. So any of that white, Resin is not mold. Yeah. Okay, it does not go on cement. Uh, he said the the only way you could actually have any mold down there if you have any substantial water. We don't have any water, but I would suggest that you know we remove like the board of health said remove the carpet. He suggests remove the carpet. So. So I, I'd like to make that motion to have someone to have him. Come and there was a if second. He can't do it. Uh, we'll have to. All in favor. Aye. 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 Okay. Chief, I'm just uh, another question. Website, How, what are we doing on the website? The, the website was for at one of the district meetings. It was recommended to do the website. At the time, there was, I think, an article put, Mr. Foss is not here. Uh, there was an article put for X amount of dollars for the website. At that time, the Prudential Committee asked John Olivera to get the website up and running. Mr. Olivera has been out on disability. It was dormant. I asked Mr. Uh, Pistachio if he could at least get it up and running so we can have a website up and running. Uh, Mr. Pistachio was go has, has it up and running, and then that was as far as it went with us. So what, what do you plan on doing? What do, you, what do you want to do with this website? 
the at the time the prudential committee is who worked out all the details with the contract with Mr. Foster, not the fire chief. Well, you if the fire chief is going to take over the website, then there will be some. If whoever's going to do it, we'll uh, remove some of the stuff that's on it, unclutter it, and well, we'll get it back. We'll get it up and running, sir. Well, you are the fire chief here, so you should be in charge of that. So, well, unfortunately, the prudential committee took it and mm -hmm. against the chief and Mr. Foster when they had only one person to go out. So, and do it. what what do you what would you suggest is on the website, or what should be taken off? Well, there's a lot of stuff on it. Most fire department websites don't have a lot. Prudential committee, association, different contact numbers. It's it's strict. One mm -hmm. contact number for every member. All the yeah. boards on it. The, the main thing is going to be is I'm not an IT guy. I've talked to Chief Aruda how long it's going to how long it may take to maintain this. I talked to Mr. Oliveira. Actually, Mr. Oliveira called myself yesterday because Mr. Stascio called him this weekend. He made a recommendation on how long he feels it will take. Now that Jay has it up and running to maintain it, it can be done. So you can, can you bring something to the board next month on everything in writing on what you think should be on the website, how many hours to maintain it, you know, Easy. give us a whole of what you want. Uh, how, also, a question. Uh, this board implemented the uh, drug policy program. How is that coming along? Other than it's very difficult, it's coming along. When, what do you mean by difficult? The difficult part is we've lost attendance, especially in the evenings. Uh, we've lost attendance during the middle of the night. Uh, we've lost attendance on weekends. Especially during when, like the Super Bowl or if the Bruins are playing, we lose attendance. A lot of members that used to walk into the fire station because the policy, the way it was written, mm -hmm. that as soon as you technically, if you were in the room right now and your name came up, you had to immediately go to St. Luke's to go get tested. Mm -hmm. And during the day, from eight to three, it can range anywhere from the quickest guy I think was 20 minutes to an hour. At 2 o'clock in the morning, it can take 3 to 5 hours. And so what's happening is a lot of members have stopped coming into the station, especially on weekends or after hours, per se, mm -hmm. with their family, because the way the policy reads, the first time we see you, you go. Question. When they uh, give you a list, is it South Coast gives you a list what, on a monthly basis? or They email us. Correct. They email you? On that list, is everyone gone? Every Everyone that they've emailed you, is everyone gone and getting te drug tested? One person has not, and I have to explain to them that that person's on uh, personal leave mm -hmm. from the department. So we had to shoot the young lady an email and explain why that individual isn't there, and they sent another name. Okay. Another question. I mean, I have a, lot of, a few more than my members can ask. Do we, and I'm here to protect the district, and so when I ask these questions, it's either it's my thoughts or some other thoughts or that people asking me. Um, do we do quarry checks on firefighters? We do. Yeah. Every, every person that's hired mm -hmm. has a quarry check. Okay. And I heard of another firefighter that's resigning. Uh, so I've had people out there in the public ask me I, for some reason everyone's paying attention to this district right now and uh, I've had some people call me up and this is public information so it's not even something that's coming from me um, I want to know if you can get to us a list by the next meeting how many firefighters have re resigned in the last like I don't know six years ten years well, okay. how many firefighters have resigned from this district for well, what for what reason, sir? Uh, public information. No, 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 that's not what yeah. I'm saying, sir. You want to know because they left because of medical reasons, or did they just resign? Because I can tell you, in about 10 years, we probably had about four that have resigned from this department in 10 years. Well, if, if we only have four, four, okay, so in 10 years. I'm going to say about four. We've lost several on medical reasons and personal reasons. 
So only four have resigned, pretty much. But I'll check the files yeah. for you. Okay. Any of my board members have any questions? Or any questions? I just had one question, which is to you guys. That in the last couple of meetings, I haven't been able to ask you. Well, if it's possible, I'd like to ask you guys if um, either you have an exact or an approximate amount, dollar amount, to how much the district has spent on legal fees regarding the lawsuit involving a former firefighter and versus the chief in the department. Um, I can get that for you the next meeting. John Foster. John Foster is the one that would keep you, the record, the record keeper of that. Uh, what we can do is we can request from the. Uh, I, I don't know. We can request. I don't understand the full question, though. We must know how much money the district has actually spent. But versus. Yeah. How much money the district counsel. has spent in legal fees? Legal fees. Yeah. On a pending lawsuit, we have. Mr. Chair, if I may. Yeah. Uh, that question was asked once before, mm -hmm. and unfortunately, the way it's broken down, it's broken down everything. It is not broken down just a lawsuit. Mm -hmm. It's all the work, all the phone calls, everything, a total big amount. Well, it, when you say broken down... It, it's not broken down. Mr. Sylvia's asking if I believe he's correct. He wants it broken down. I don't and think he's... Exactly. Well, a breakdown of kind of what we've been paying as far as for legal fees. Do you want just the total amount for the whole... Um, the total amount that we spent just on that case? Correct. So if he wants the total amount on that case, the lawyers can break that down because it's their computer. They can tell us exactly how much they build us. I mean, you, you're from a law firm. If someone wanted to... Yeah, I, I can't speak to Attorney Murray, yeah. Murray right, but I, I presume he'll be able to yeah. answer right now. So why don't we, at the uh, next meeting, I'll contact the legal counsel and ask them how much it's cost us for the lawsuit existing also that we have pending I mean I had figures that it was when I I asked um, I'm pretty sure I think I asked that firm and uh, it was very excessive it could have been close to I mean I'm just estimating but close to a hundred thousand so. dollars And I think it, actually, I think it was John Foster I asked when he was here once, yeah, and the lawyers. But we'll get you the uh, information. Thank you. How long has that been going on for 2006, 7, 8? Do you know, Chief? I do know it was scheduled to be in Superior Court. Yeah, but how long, when did that start? I think 2004. Uh, any other questions? Do yep. you have questions? Okay, the next item uh, we have here, Council uh, Brian Cruz from Anthony Sevastano's office. And we received Uh, we received a complaint about an open meeting uh, violation. Actually, I might want to... Um, I, I want to put this in the record, so should I take up this first? And then the response that can be in the record. Uh, Uh, well, okay, the first, before we, uh, we, we go to the open meeting, uh, we received a, uh, a letter here. Uh, a actually, it was on uh, February 9th. It was dated February 8th. I received it on February 9th after this meeting. And it was from a law firm, Collins and Weinberg, and representing, I guess, the chief. And we, in fact, sent this... Uh, to law firm of uh, Anthony Sevastano, and in turn, Anthony Sevastano sent a letter to the chief's lawyer. And 
we have no response from the uh, chief's lawyer at this point on this. Uh, should I read any of this? If I read it, it becomes uh, part of the minutes. Well, you re- you've referenced the documents, and the documents are part of the minutes. So it's part of the minutes. Are you aware of this letter, Chief? That you have another one coming. You want to make it public? Okay. It's all yours. Yeah. Well, it is now. Uh, now we're going to go to the open meeting. Complaint we have, Brian. The uh, a little over a month ago, the chief uh, presented a uh, complaint uh, regarding various public meeting open meeting violations under the open meeting law. Um, whenever the bench committee under the open meeting law receives such a complaint, uh, they have to address it and review the factual uh, premises and, and allegations behind it. Which is obviously the purpose of what we're doing right now. Um, to a large degree, obviously the, the factual allegations are somewhat vague, so if you want to inquire into them in more detail, feel free to go ahead. That's your prerogative under the law. Um, to a large degree, at least we feel that the allegations, even if true, don't amount to an open meeting violation. Uh, the uh, various allegations with respect to whether or not the February 9th meeting was held uh, without the chief's presence whether that was done on purpose, uh, whether he was supposed to be there because it was regarding uh, renewal or not renewal of his contract, uh, whether various persons were allowed to speak in his favor, and whether or not certain letters were not written to the record. Um, Under the open meeting law, the only time that an individual is required to be at a meeting is if that meeting is to discuss his reputation, character, uh, complaints against him, discipline of him. Um, None of that was the purpose of that meeting. Um, in fact, my understanding is that it was simply a vote up or down whether or not to send notice of non Um So if that is the case, uh, then it didn't discuss character reputation, discipline, complaints, anything like that. Uh, and for that reason, uh, there's no requirement in the law that any particular individual be at the meeting, uh, that it be scheduled to ensure that he's at the meeting. Um, and uh, be, again, corollaries that uh, in general, and as you actually alluded to a little bit at the beginning of the meeting, uh, there is no requirement under the open meeting law that you as chair allow any particular person to speak uh, or any particular uh, letter be read into the record. Um, if you want to reference a letter, then that letter becomes part of the record. Uh, there's no obligation that you mention any particular letter you received, although those letters, having been received by the pension committee, are public record and pursuant to a public record request, you have to produce them. With respect to uh, anyone being allowed to speak, the only time that someone has the absolute right to speak at a meeting is, again, if that meeting is regarding character reputation, complaints, discipline, something like that. Then that individual, well, whom the meeting is held, uh, would have the right to do so. Those meetings would be an executive session, by the way, if it's character reputation, discipline, complaints. Um, and uh, as the chief has, I don't believe, alleged that it should have been an executive session doesn't seem like he feels that it was character reputation or anything like that without him being present. Uh, and again, based upon what has been represented to me is what happened at that meeting, I couldn't see how it would be character reputation complaints or uh, discipline. Um, so in that respect, um, most of the allegations in the chief's complaint don't actually reference an open meeting violation. They reference the power of the chief discretionary end of the law on what he wants to happen at the meeting. So those aren't really open meeting violations per se. Um, the one thing that seems to be pretty credible is with respect to the minutes, uh, but we've already addressed that, obviously, mm-hmm. and that's being remedied. So uh, obviously, um, that analysis I just provided is to a large degree based upon the minimal facts that were presented in the Chief's complaint. Um, I obviously urge you guys to uh, inquire into more detail to see if there's anything that might be uh, fleshed out more that can provide different analysis. But based upon what was presented in the complaint itself, uh, from a legal perspective, uh, there doesn't seem to actually be a, complaint, a, a, a violation alleged, uh, saving only with respect to the minutes, as again I said, we've taken care of that. So, um, if you guys have any questions regarding that, I, we do have a letter that we'll present to you guys after the meeting, a confidential letter, attorney client privilege, uh, so please don't disclose it. Um, fleshing out in more detail this, um, and then obviously it's your decision whether or not you think 
a, uh, a violation occurred, and if so, what should you do in terms of remedy it, and then we'll represent that to the Attorney General's office. Um, but um, first things first is that what the law says is that you guys should do an inquiry into the time, place, manner, and circumstances of the election violations of the law so that we can get a better factual understanding. Um, and that being said, as I said, um, based on the scant facts presented in the letter and the complaint, it doesn't appear that beyond the minutes an open meeting violation occurred. So. Hmm. Okay, and one other item is, a, is the letter that was sent after the meeting. So this letter that was sent to the chief can be also part of the minutes. And the next are articles on the warrant. Ed? You might have it. I got a copy of last year's warrant because normally most of the articles, like I think the first six, are basically the same year after year. Mm -hmm. So here's a copy for each one of you. And also if you want to add any other. I think John and I think the chief got together on the budget items, right, chief? On the numbers? On oh, that. Mr. Chair? Right. Yeah, wait, wait. I'm done. I think the chief, because that's part of the chief and the treasurers get together to come up with the numbers, like for the support of the district and stuff. I believe you've done that, right, chief? Have you done that, chief? Yeah, we've done some of them. We're not, we're not totally complete. Uh, I'm talking to Mr. Clark. If I may, Mr. Chair? Yes. In talking to the treasurer this morning, the treasurer said that I guess you spoke to him and maybe in two weeks to finalize it. There's something that's come up on Marine One that we're going to either try to come forward in two weeks with a purchase order to fix it while it's hauled out of the water, which is basically <coughs> replace all its electronics while mm -hmm. it's hauled to try to save taxpayers money. If we can't do that, then we'll have to put an article in. So will be finalized with that for next your next meeting. All right. I would suggest then to my other uh, board members that we hold a meeting. We shouldn't wait for the second Wednesday of, uh, like we did last year and the year before. We shouldn't yeah, wait for the next you know, meeting. We have deadlines. I don't want to be doing this the last minute. We have a deadline has to be posted throughout the town. It has to be in the Dama Chronicle. I want to make sure this is done in enough time so it's posted properly. Everybody knows what's going on. So we should uh, meet in... Oh, you have two weeks from today? I would suggest maybe two weeks. We uh, give you this, mm -hmm. gives you an idea what the numbers were last year, if we want to raise them or whatever, whatever we want to do, so that we have a picture so we can go forward. I don't want to wait till the last minute. All right, so in two weeks, uh, we should schedule? 23rd. 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 March, March 23rd. Mm -hmm. And also, um, you know, notice to the public that if they want any articles on this warrant, I don't know if it's 10. What, what is that? Is it 10 or 25 registered voters from the district? Or is it 50? Or what is it? Okay. It's, it's Chair, if I may, it's 10. Yeah, it is 10. The pedestrian can assault whatever. They don't have to get into it. But if a person wants it, the regular meeting is 10 registered voters. If it's a special meeting, it's 50. 
Okay, that's why it's on the 50. So, it have to be 10 people. Okay. But I think we're going to set a deadline when they can do that because we don't want to wait until we get the water all so, put up and somebody comes in with a petition they want to change something and well, then it's what are our, what, What's our deadline that we have to have this It'll warrant? It will be posted oh. seven days prior to the meeting. The meeting would be, I believe, May, probably May 11th, probably. May 11th, so. So pr seven days prior to that, it's going to be posted in the paper and then it gets posted at the COA building, mm -hmm. the town hall here, and the Southworth Library. But the mm -hmm. important one is the paper, because the paper right. comes out once a week, um, once so a week. So 30 days from uh, and our next meeting, which would be uh, the scheduled meeting, <coughs> the uh, second Wednesday of, I would say, April. Yep. We're going to have a meeting in two weeks from now, right. but if anyone wants any additional uh, items on the warrant, it has to be done by April. Maybe uh, we could get that on the website or something. Can we do that, Chief? If anyone wants to put any articles in, Go to who do they submit? The potential who, committee. The potential committee. All you need is ten signatures. Yeah, apparently. but they have. If I understand, if I may, Mr. Chair, they're going to meet in two weeks to finalize the warrant. Then they have to have it in two weeks. Well, no, they don't have to have it in two weeks. It's. it's once, he said it's seven days. You no, see, it's seven days before. finalized. Right. That's if the potential committee finalizes it then, but I, I know, I just want to give enough time if anyone wants to have any warrant, you know, any items, you know, on the warrant, any articles, they have enough time. So I mean, if we, if we're not having an annual meeting until May, it's May 11th, April, May 11th a, a month before, it's plenty of time, so if we should have it by the next uh, meeting. Try to, we should try to get everything done by next meeting, but what happens if we say, if we say, okay, let's finalize everything in two weeks, and then all of a sudden... We have other items that have to go on or, or because it's happened. Yeah, because it's happened before. When how many times did we change the last one? Ed, right? Yeah. Okay. So I would think that we definitely have a meeting. We don't even have any any basis here right now, Chief. So yourself and John uh, Foster, the treasurer, needs to come to us in two weeks with everything that you have to put on. With, with all the instructions, Mr. Chair. The only thing that's left in the path is probably a, an eight thousand dollar. Item for the Marine. They, all the articles from the fire department have are done. The only articles that are not done, well, other than some changes that your board, some fee changes, fee schedule changes for your board to approve, the fire department half is done. Well, the where is it? Committee, well, where is it? It's right there in front of you. Mr. Foster, the treasurer put everything in front of you. Oh, yeah. So, we, we'll just the go the so you've gone over everything with him and Correct, sir. all these numbers here? Correct, sir. Okay. We did the budget for the fire department, right. including the salaries of the members. All right. So we're going to have a meeting. So the only thing that came up, and it came up today, Mr. Chair, is the question in regards to Marine One. Do we want to wait until July 1st and then pay to have it all, or do we want to try to get it done while the boat's sitting on dry dock? That's the only well, we, thing that came up. Well, see, there's another thing, too. We should wait till April at the end, because even in April, we still have... You know, three months to the fiscal year. We do we still have another three months. Yeah. April, May, June. Can't wait till the last minute. No. Yeah. We'll wait. We'll wait till that second. No, it's too late. Too late. No, it's too late. May, April, eleven. Yeah. 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 Why is it too late? We have seven days before for advertising. When is the annual meeting going to be in May? But our it's be when, when is <laughs> our the second week of April? When's that meeting? That Wednesday. We can't have it just on that day. That's going to put it past the 11th. I don't have a calendar. No, so so. Seven days before May is seven days before May. No, we May have to May. finalize it 30 days in advance, correct? No, no seven days. Seven days could be posted seven, seven days, days prior to the meeting. Right, prior to the meeting. <coughs> That's all. The meeting. So, so okay, Ed, so what Ed does is he, he sets a date for the, for the meeting, and as long as we have it done seven days before, we're going to have this done 30 days before. So, yeah. No meeting on the 23rd. No, we are going to still have a meeting just to get as many items as we can on there. And then, and then we have our regular meeting anyways. And that's when we'll so, yeah, finalize Yeah, right. So we'll right. just finalize it at our regular we'll meeting in April. on the April meeting. Yeah. yeah. That night yeah. has to be done right. so we'll that night. Because yeah. other than that, right. But we should meet in two weeks to try to get 90 95% or even 100% done if we can. Right, exactly. But not finalize it until uh, that April meeting. It's going to be done okay. at April meeting or else we got right. chaos. So we're definitely going to have a meeting in two weeks on the... Uh, on the warrant. But if people could would submit articles, if they want to put something in, if they could do it on that, that'd be great. Yeah. yeah. 
but I think we should have a way to get it so people, if they don't want right. to do it, they should be able to do it. Yeah, how, uh, maybe we should put it on that website. Jason here? Can we ask him to do it? Chief, who are you going to have? Um, who's doing the website now, Jason? Jason just got it up and running. Okay. That was it. So who's going to... Me, who's maintaining it right now, anyone? No one's technically maintaining it right now. It, it was in talking to Jason, I had told Jason to just put certain things, and I believe you told him to put certain things on it, so it, it went back and forth. I actually told him to take some stuff off it mm. because no one was proofreading, it was just going on. Mm. It, it, I can, we can have something, I'm sure Jay will take Jay about an hour, to put something on the website that if anybody has any articles, yeah. they're due to the prevention mm -hmm. committee by the second Wednesday in April. Mm -hmm. That will be the deadline for any articles right. to be placed on the warrant. Exactly. Because we've already placed the bylaws, and Jason put the bylaws on it, which I think is great for people to see it. Yeah. So those things are the bylaws on, on there? The more we can put on it, it right. makes it look a heck of a lot Well, better. the bylaws, I mean, everything here is public information. Everything we do is public information. So um, I think that we should put the bylaws. I just asked one quick question. The warrant? Hmm? Is he getting compensated for, for doing the website? Doing that? I know it's a timely thing because I have a website myself. Does he get anything for doing that? Chief? Hourly rate or is it a duty? He, we gave him an hourly rate. If the question's going to come down, depending on how long it's going to take, hmm? Mr. Stashio sent everybody a, a letter oh. saying it's about 10 hours a week to maintain it. <coughs> If it's going to be wait, wait. a part-time job, <coughs> then uh, it might have to get posted. Do you have a copy? Yeah, it should be right there. Yeah, well, we have so many. In this, and when we did the Don't budget. Chief, excuse me. What's the, um, instead of going for this, this is from, uh, okay. and, and if we did the budget, when we did the budget, that was before that. So if we're going to pay somebody... Fifteen dollars an hour until July first, and then if the voters change the detail, then we got to add close to ten thousand dollars into the budget to go by the hours that Mr. Sashio's put, and then uh, the question will come back down since it's close to ten thousand dollars a year. Mm. If it's going to get posted and then it gets advertised to the most, the highest qualified person. Yeah, I. Uh I'm looking at some of these items that he, you know, like for example, I think if we put district forms on there, that that helps instead of individuals having to come in and get inspection forms. And so they're already on there now. Are they on there? They're on there now. You can download them. You, you by mm -hmm. law, you still have to come to the fire department. That's on the website now. Well, yeah, but they can fill them out and then just Correct. come here. That's that's been on the, the website since Mr. Oliver did. What else is on there since he did it? Uh, he had different links links to different. Uh, Associations. He had links to the town. <coughs> the only thing he did not do is actually get it up live. Mr. Stashio has taken it, made it. Well, basically, we're using Mr. Stashio's server, so the district's got to look into getting their own server instead of using Jason's server. Now you can go on there, and matter of fact, this meeting is on there. You can go to the site and on the calendar. So everything's on the calendar. So we've, we've calendar. had a website, but it's never been live. It's never been live. So what's good about a website? <coughs> if it's never been live, I mean, well, did we pay for that? Let me phrase that. It's huh? if you knew how to, if, it's live now, right now, as a point well, like this if week. You knew how to get to week? it. You could get to it. It's always been there. If you knew the site, it's always been there for two years. Unfortunately, what we're going to, we have to work on is like right now, if you try to Google down at District One. The site doesn't come on. So what do you have? How do you get on the, the um, how do you get on our website? Mr. Chair, if I can speak. Sure. The way that it's designed right now is the site we're using a mirror server, which means is we are paying for our domain, which we've been paying for many years since 2003. So how much does the domain cost? The yeah. domain is actually part of our Comcast service. Okay. And the website server, which is our website development company, we pay them, I believe it's 1025 a year. Uh, it only includes basically to use their forms. Is when you click on the website, that form you see is their form. We don't own that form. It's 
to maintain it, design it, put whatever we want to do, that's done by us. We didn't buy that package when we first signed up with them. I believe our contract with them ends uh, 2023. Okay. Um, but right now it serves as dotmithfire.com. We had that domain. And we don't so when you say, so it's just dotmithfire.com? Dotmithfire.com. Not dotmithfire.district1.com? No. We own dotmithfire.com. I figured we, we might as well utilize it mm -hmm. since we already have it. Um, <coughs> I just don't, I mean, there are three districts in the town. I wouldn't want someone to get any, any one of those confused. So. The, the Google pop, mm -hmm. that was something that has to get discussed between that. That's just a matter of, you know, a couple of hours. I did contact them. There's no fee. There's just a grant we have to apply for to actually mm -hmm. go underneath the Google search. J4, you're coming to us with this next meeting, right? Yep. On the website. And also, <coughs> it'd be, you know, interesting to see what the other fire departments do and have one similar or... You know, be, be creative and so I mean I'm sure f some fire departments have some items and not other items but I really think that I mean like like the clerk here said we should have our bylaws on there for this district and we should have as much information as we can on there uh, you know for the uh, for the district for the voters or anyone else that wants to see our website uh, and I, I know also uh, you know I myself were thinking about maybe we, should, maybe we can put the minutes on there but I think I'm going to have to check with legal counsel to see if we really can put, you know, the minutes on on the website and whether we should just let it stay that someone should request them for the, you know, what is it, 14 days or I'll, I'll check, you know, with legal on that. Maybe we can put um, a minutes. Okay. Next would be procurement officer. Finally, we went to you after a month, three months. Last meeting. Sorry about last meeting, but. What do you have for us, myself? Well, what you would ask me to do is to uh, is to uh, set up the um, the roof bid, and uh, I ended up doing the whole redoing the whole roof bid because <coughs> we had a meeting. And I don't think you would hear that meeting because we were two one more year, and we uh, we reviewed it, and um, they made some suggestions as to what they want to change and what we should look at. Mm -hmm. And um, um, the, uh, they made some... Uh, some changes um, at that last meeting, um, and, and there were there were a number of changes that we made. So I, I just redid the whole thing because, uh, and, and we also changed dates and so on and so forth. Instead of having a date, a specific date to stop by and to end by, uh, we put uh, we set it up so that it would stop within 30 days after the signing of the contract. And, uh, to be completed within 45 days. Okay. Now, we also what we also did, I also did, was to break up, seeing as there were two um, articles in the, in the warrant that separate one to do the roof and one to do the, the uh, vinyl trim and so on and so forth, rather than combine them and find that... Um, Either the money went over, and we only had so much money to do the roof, and so much money to do the the um, vinyl trim. We couldn't combine those. I actually think that we already, and maybe to my recollection, I actually think didn't we already have the money appropriated to do some trim? Yeah, yeah. that's, yeah. Our, yeah. that's, 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 that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Sure. Uh, several years ago, two or three years ago, you mm -hmm. made you got a. Uh, Water. It was on the warrant to right. to to do the the final and, we never did. and it was not it was never done. Although the money is still turned over mm -hmm. because it's right. So we don't want so that put in with right the roof. exactly. You're yeah, stuff so I didn't want to, I didn't want to put it right. in with the roof because if you put the roof in the same right. had I, I, for instance sixty thousand dollars to do the roof mm -hmm. and uh, right. I don't know what the other amount was, but uh, so what I did is I split it up as okay. you see there. It right. Split up into two different. Two different bids. Mm -hmm. Tank Gumby can bid, but uh, it could be uh, it's two separate bids. 
uh, so that we know that we have enough to do the vinyl and we, or we, and we know we have enough to do the, the roof or whatever we have to do because we can't combine them. Okay. <clears throat> what do my members think? Made the adjustments was to the shingles, wasn't right. it? The weight? Yeah, um, you changed the yeah, weight of the shingles. Right. Right. <clears throat> We've got water and ice on everything. Yeah. yeah. We've got 50 uh, shingles, so our mm -hmm. lifetime. We had a rich man. Sure, it's okay. I that was a question. I mean, yeah, as I a think matter of fact, because um, it's a general idea to find them. You okay. did request that we check with the attorney. Uh, we did. I did check with the attorney the next day, and again a couple of weeks later, and he said he would uh, uh, fax us over uh, some verbiage that he thought we should use or could use. Uh, and we never received it. Um, so I just went along and, and um, put in uh, what I felt was correct. Well, I, think it, I think, personally, I'm just one member of the board, I think the $5 million aggregate is, is covered. And I, also, the automo uh, automobile liability insurance at $1 million. Mm -hmm. so. Well, that's, yeah, in case somebody has right. it on site. Exactly. Yeah. Good idea. Uh, actually, actually on this insurance, can you put in here somehow that that's minimal? Because we could actually have someone that has more insurance. Mm -hmm. I think that's the need. Hmm? Need some set. I would just put in the minimal. You know, just add it. Yes. <coughs> <coughs> Mr. Chairman, I have a question. Yes. Uh, Marcel, um, what happens if we come, the bids come back and we're over what we have? Are you going to have to have a special meeting? Or? Yeah, you have to have a special meeting to increase the amount of whatever we have to. Well, we could put it on the warrant if we have to get them back. Right, right. We could do that because you, you, well, I don't think we're going to have time, to be honest okay. with you, because by the time we get this out of the, you know, if you approve it uh, this evening, then we can, we can have it out, um, you know, this week or the week by the beginning of next week, <clears throat> get it into the newspaper, and we have to send it to Boston. To be in their uh, their um, you know, periodical arrangement. What do you think is a turnaround? In other words, once it went out the bid. Well, you want you want to give them you want to give them thirty days. Mm -hmm. You know, to do a, a proper code. They have to come. They have to do some measuring. Right. <laughs> they have to do whatever. Well, gonna, we could be pretty close to our fiscal year by the time. Well, of, correct. Yeah. Correct. So unlikely that we could have a special meeting is very possible. Yes. You could have actually you could have a special meeting the same within the, the same night. The same night. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm comfortable with that. Is That's there a motion good. on the floor? I make a motion. I second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Sign yours. We'll have. We'll give them three copies. Joe, sign yours. You, you want to give them three different yeah, copies on. back, or just sign one? Everyone sign one. How many copies do you need signed? Uh, just you can sign uh, one. Just one copy. It needs to be signed. Right. I'll, I'll copy with the original. Right. right. We'll, we'll copy. See, so we don't have a photo copy yet, and then we'll just sign and keep one for our records. Okay. Okay. 
Did you put the word minimum in where you wanted? I'll, I'll, I'll change that. I'll change that. Oh, you sign my side. I need you to upload it. Yeah. Uh, sign here. Uh, yeah. So you put a couple lines. So I sign here. Yeah. Also, one other item, uh, compensation. Do you have a, uh, a bill for us? Or? I, don't have, I don't have a bill. I, um, you were going well, to you keep it, you're logging what, your, yeah. what we, you know, what in fact you want me to do, how right. much time you want me to spend. I mean. I think <laughs> what you should do is just log in your hours, keep a log of your hours. Yeah. And then we'll just pay you at a uh, reasonable rate. Okay. Which, well, which I have, uh, you know, I have approximately, uh, Approximately 15 hours in mm -hmm. between this and other right. items that I've, that I've uh, mm -hmm. done. Um, officially, um, there's, a, there's a form that, that, that the Joint Committee of the Chairman has to sign okay. <clears throat> with reference to um, the state as far as, as me being uh, appointed uh, as the, the Chief of Human Office. And uh, that's, that's got to be signed and approved uh, by the state um, technically before I'm okay. um, um, anything, I guess. Well, can you give us that form? <clears throat> Motion to a, a point. We already we already did. We already did. Well, so you 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 acting acting uh, procurement officer at the time. That's what you're right. Okay. So, so I would think that it should be a motion on the floor that we so appoint him our procurement chief procurement officer. Make it a motion. A second. On favor. Aye. Aye. I can fill this in for you after the meeting. This is quite a few items I have to fill in. Well, this, I don't think we have to do the whole thing because there's that one form that you have to sign. Well, I'll sign here the title, <coughs> yeah. department, my name. Department. Just you can fill it in, I'll just sign it. What is the um, what is the the rate average rate for a procurement officer? Um, I've checked a few places mm -hmm. and I think um, is there a range for us? Yeah, there's well, there's there's a range. There's, <laughs> yeah, there's but, a big range. But I, I think uh, for instance, District Three uh, is thirty five an hour. Um, I think. Okay. You know, that's uh, reasonable. It goes up. I've seen them at fifty. You know, seen them. Is there a, a motion on the floor that we, uh, on our chief of human officer, that the rate is set at thirty-five dollars an hour? I'll we'll make that motion. A second. I'm in favor. Right. Okay. So, you know, keep your hours and then just send us a bill. Yeah. Thank you. There actually is another issue. I think that we. Uh, um, we have a, an issue here that was handed to me, and I, I really don't know an awful lot about it. Mm -hmm. But it's got to do with uh, United Divers. Um, it's a, an outstanding, outstanding bill. I guess it's uh, six thousand one hundred and fifty-one dollars and ninety-eight cents. What is it for? It, it's for. Uh, 
Is it one Dice bill? Dice uh, is, is one bill. Yeah, but is it different items? No. It just, it just this, this bill here just uh, has one. <clears throat> yeah, see, it's one bill, but that could be like so many different items. Well, it was, and it could be over different periods all of time. Than the one purchase order. Um, it, it, I don't Chief, know, can I've you got, explain I've got this? A lot of, uh, a, a lot See, we, we do business with, it's for our dive team. Yeah. And I mean, what happens is if um, this board, at various times, we've appropriated actually any money needed for our dive team. <coughs> Um, you know, we get the bills in, uh, whether it's one suit, two. I mean, if we have a combination of a few suits, it's going to be way over that. See, that's a purchase um, order that's 6130 yeah. which is over the $5,000. Uh, Chief, who does the purchase orders? Of? That, that, actually, that purchase order right there, Mr. Chairman, if you check your minutes, that purchase order in June was approved for $4,200. And in July, that same purchase order got changed to forty three hundred dollars, sixty three or whatever it is. Well, if we approved it for forty two, that's what we need to get in. If there's any more items, they're gonna have to send us a bill for something else. She actually sent you in your pile there of uh, letters. Right here. She actually mm -hmm. sent you a letter. She's been calling the station. She's talked to Lieutenant Picudo. Uh We've tried taking one of the suits back, and. We own the suits here. We've had the suits since October. That's the bill that the auditors pulled last, the auditors and the treasurer pulled last October or last November. But on that 4,200, what was it specifically for? It was for two complete, drive, two, two right. complete suits. Suits, which I have here, two hazmat dry suits. For eighteen forty-five, that'd be eighteen forty-five each. If you check your minutes, you will find June. June 9th, purchase order two zero eight nine four zero two six. If you go to July, you'll find that same purchase order number change. <coughs> and in July, that same purchase order is now for six something. So if we have a purchase order for two zero eight nine. That was presented to this board for four thousand dollars or forty-two. Why am I receiving one for two thousand? Uh, purchase order two thousand eighty-nine for six thousand one thirty. I have no idea. The chief approached your because board it was re it in was June, hmm? and the chief went in front of your board in June for four thousand dollars. Right. So why don't we <coughs> call them back? Because we we when we voted on two zero eight nine according to these minutes. We voted on 2089. Right. Somebody must, along the line, took it upon themselves because immediately after, because we were coming to the end of the fiscal year, instead of waiting to take it out of the fiscal year 2000, the next fiscal year's budget, we had the money available. So we also approved a purchase right. order for mm -hmm. two wetsuits in setup. Yeah, that's it. And they combined it. So. So, for, I mean, first of all, if I add this up, if I actually add this up. Well, from what I understand, the, the branch committee wanted to take money out of the previous right, years. Right, exactly. But the books were closed, so you can't do that. No, they were not closed. They weren't closed at the time of we June of well, I, that, that was recommended by right. Foster. Yeah, but the, Foster. The, yeah. when the July bill came up. Well, what they did was they added a bill to this bill. Well, that's I, what, I, that's I, what I, I don't know. I mean, because I, we approved. I, I wasn't involved, but... I mean, I just got that. And so, who communicated with the? Who communicates? I mean, do we have a few people communicating with them, Chief? Or? No. What happened was the chief. The chief authorized. Yeah. Who's the here? Two hundred dollars. The chief did not authorize the extra money in July. The chief neither did the procurement officer. We did not know about that until after the fact that our purchase orders were changed. The individual that dealt with them uh, was Lieutenant Takuto. Mm -hmm. We asked, the procurement officer asked me for three bids. I asked the lieutenant. The lieutenant told me to see the credential committee. Let me think of how to straighten this out. <coughs> Who's handwriting is that? That's Lieutenant Takudos. And if you talk to a young lady from United Dives, the only person she, she has spoke to me probably the past couple of months, a little irate, that she hasn't received the payment. And I told her, I had her talk, well, I told her 
that she might have to discuss it with the Cuban officer or submit a letter, which she submitted a letter to your board. Do you have that letter? It's probably, it's probably in the file there. Do you want to contact her and let her know what the issue is? Well, I just, I have to think, well, on 30B it's 5,000. Right. But the original intention was for two separate ones. Right. Two separate. So well, the original intention was that two suits for 4200 What happened was all these items are added on. Exactly. So if she wants to get paid right away, she can send us a bill for $42,000 yeah, like we originally. Tell her to send her a bill for the original additional. purchase order. Call her and tell her to send us a bill for the original purchase order. We may two, have to uh, go back. 2089. Excuse me, and then they can send us a bill for the others. I mean, according to her, the only purchase order she has is that number for six thousand and something. So that's why she sent one invoice for that amount of money. Well, obviously it was sent incorrectly to her. Okay, well, I, so I'm just trying to, I'm just I, trying to solve the problem here. The second half, whatever was approved in July, yeah. I have no idea it was approved in July. I was not here. Mm. I do know that we had the discussion the second week in June to get two. Complete. Two suits. Actually, I went in front of the board with right. one. And, we, and, and I said two. Extra money, we changed said two. the purchase order right. to two complete suits mm -hmm. in June. All the rest that was added, I have no idea what it is. Well, I think that because this board approved the 4200 that was presented as for 2089, that's what we should send a check for is the, what was approved before. How much was it? Um, 4026. 4026. <laughs> You know, that's what we approved. Also approved, at that time it says also approved purchase order, doesn't have a number mm -hmm. for two wetsuits and setups. So I don't know what in setup refers to. Mm -hmm. Weight belts, masks, <coughs> regulators, I don't know. Yeah, but that could go over the. That would be the difference. Yeah. So subtract oh, yeah. the four, 26. Four zero two six. Well, we're off eleven thirty, but I really think that we have to pay for what we the four zero two six, and then she's gonna have to send us a bill for the other <coughs> items and check that out. I mean, you can call the state now that you know the situation. Call the state and tell them that you know this is what happened. <coughs> we approved it for four zero two six. They sent us a bill because they had add-ons. Uh, because what's happened is we only meet once a month. We only do the more once a month. Explain that to them. This is not a weekly event. And uh, see what they say. But I, I would think that if we send the 4026 to them, that's what we approve. They want to bill us for these items. I mean, we're spending money for the dive team all year long. Yeah. Well, you know, for, uh, it's not as if this is a uh, one-shot, one-time deal. As a matter of fact, if I recall... This group that we use is cheaper than who we used before. Is that correct, Chief? We never got the bids on the other guys. So no, I mean pricing. Pricing. I thought it was. Uh, this board was told that this uh, they were less money than the out the, the group we purchased equipment Pro from before. From the suits. I right. Don't know about the rest of the equipment. Yeah. Wrong. So. But we have all the equipment that's been still sitting in the station since October. Well, I, I, we need to send them a check at least for the 4260 because uh, four, 4026 because we approved that. So can you send them that check? Um, and then just call the state and just tell them, you put them on notice, even if you have to email them. <coughs> what really chance by it? Thank you. Yeah. And just when we are ordering anything, um, obviously we can't have any purchase. I mean, we we thought that was four zero two six and went in for more. Well, it's a, it, it's a mistake. You know, it could be an honest mistake, and it's uh, it's not as if it, it's for a very large amount, but it happens. So you just can't put any purchase orders of over five thousand dollars. That's, it. that's all that's on the agenda. So. Um, you have anything? Mr. Chair, 
the illustrator. That's what's on the agenda. Mr. Chair, if I could, um, with respect to the Chief's opening and offering plan, um, well, it's your project, what I do is some factual inquiry. Uh, there is a time limit under which you guys have to make a decision on whether or not you feel uh, any violations were actually made and what remedies would actually take if necessary. Uh, so you do have to make that decision. Uh, and that has to be reported to the Attorney General's office. Uh, if you want to take our recommendation to that beyond the uh, issue with the minutes, we don't believe, based on the facts presented, that there were any open meeting violations made, that's fine. Uh, that's your prerogative. But uh, a decision by the committee does have to be made with respect to it in order to report to the Attorney General's office. So, so can we uh, make a decision based on uh, council that's recommendation? That's your prerogative if you'd like to. Or All right, so I, I mean, I would suggest that we make a recommendation based on what council advises us and let council send the letter representing us. Again, you're, if that, that is your prerogative, if you okay. feel that you don't need a more factual inquiry, that's fine. As I said, it's our legal opinion that uh, beyond the issue with respect to the minutes, there was no meeting violation. And if you want to adopt that, that is your prerogative. Oh, you weren't here. So, yeah, so we can just adopt what's recommended to us by legal counsel. There does have to be an official okay. statement to that effect. That's All right, so is there a motion on the floor? Yes, I make a motion. What is the motion? To accept. That we adopt, the uh, motion made that we adopt uh, recommendation per legal counsel. There was no violation. No violation. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Before you adjourn, if I may. Yes. I've got a purchase order for you. My purchase orders will come through, sir, with my initials on the bottom that we've approved. Asking to approve that. 2600 or, and I thought the changes for the new airbag system for Rescue 6. The old system is outdated. Uh, it's on state bid. I've already passed it by the Kimmer officer. He has no issue with it. I have no issue with it if it's on state motion bid. Motion I make motion. We accept purchase order 2117 in the amount of 2644 as presented by the chief for a master control kit paratech. Now, what is that? What is that for? I'll second it. On state oh, on favor, aye. Aye. Um, also, for the record, I don't know how my members feel, but from now on, any purchase orders, and I don't know if we should contact our vendors, but all the purchase orders should be any any that we approved has to be signed or initialed uh, from this point on, and also. Um, Vendors that we consistently do business with, maybe we should send them off a letter, or the chief should, or that they should not accept any that's over five thousand dollars. You know, this way we won't. If if say for some reason we don't catch it, like this slip through the cracks, at least our vendors would be able to catch it, and we wouldn't be in this position where we have to figure out what to do. It. Any other questions? Um, you might want to sign the bottom of that and pass it on. <coughs> Motion.